Gachi Data Systems, this is Paulina speaking. How can I help you? Could you please repeat the invoice number for me? Can I please get a callback number from you and I'll get back with all this information? Great, so I'll get back to you as soon as I have uh, all the information. Okay. Thank you, have a great day. Bye. Hi, I'm Polina. Uh, I've been working for Hitachi Data Systems for three years now. Uh, I'm a cash collection specialist. The system we use is Oracle Advanced Collection and it helps us uh, work on a daily basis to prioritize the customers uh, that we contact. The first thing I do when I log on into the system, I go into the strategy work items tab. Um, it shows me all the customers that have passed you invoices and shows me various strategies that Oracle Advanced Collection suggests we should use for cash collection purposes. The first strategy that appears when an invoice gets past due is review for soft dunning. So here also we can see that um, Oracle Advanced Collection has chosen a low strategy for this account, meaning that the customer um, is a good payer in general. What I do is go to the transactions tab to see the open invoices. We will send this customer an automated soft dunning letter. So all I need to do is select the line review for soft dunning and click complete work. This has moved to the next line and after seven days pass, this item, if the invoice is not paid, will once again show up on our strategy. The action on this account now is to leave a note, just as a reminder that soft dunning letter sent. The unpaid reason in this case would be statement sent. The action on this account is complete now and when we refresh the strategy it will disappear from the list. All right, um, good afternoon everybody. Um, firstly, I'd like to thank Mark for letting me speak directly after lunch because everyone's way happier after they've had coffee and a full tummy. So Mark, thanks for that, I'll shout you a beer later on. Um, my name is Anthony Schappa. I'm the Accounts Receivable Supervisor for a company called Allergan. Um, my area of responsibility is EMEA, and I'm gonna talk to you guys today about my company's journey from using ERP or SAP to a credit control solution or software over the last 10 years, okay? A bit about Allergan. So Allergan's an Irish global um, pharmaceutical company. We specialize in medical aesthetics, eye care, and dermatology. Can I just get a quick show of hands uh, before I start? Who here has heard of Allergan? Don't be shy. Okay, who here has heard of Botox? All right. It's amazing when I say that all the ladies suddenly start smiling and all interested. So the company I work for is the world producer of Botox. In fact, the town I live in, about 200 meters from where I sit, the entire world supply of Botox is made. Now, I can't get any discounts, so you'll speak to my boss about that after the, after the presentation if you want. Um, we also produce uh, the Natrel breast implant range, which always gets a few giggles when people ask you what you do. I work with Botox and our breast implants. Um, but we're based in the west of Ireland, which is as far west in Ireland as you can go. It's really at the end of the road. I've showed you a mountain here. And living in Westport and being based in Westport presents its own unique challenges, okay? This little mountain I've showed you here, uh, you guys have all heard of St. Patrick? Yes? I'm sure you all have a drink on the 17th of March every year, yes? Okay. So a little thing about my town is it's the town of St. Patrick. Uh, it's alleged he uh, lived 30 years on that mountain. Um, it might be the reason why there's 30 or 40 pubs within a square kilometre in Westport. Um, but it's a brilliant place to live, rains all the time. But as I said, that presents its unique challenges when it comes to collections. Okay. So my first question of the day. Botox. What does Botox treat? Migraine reduced appearance of wrinkles. Severe, I don't know where the marketing department gets these things from. Severe sweating, lazy eye, or all of the above. So if you go onto your app now, we'll wait 20 seconds.
maybe a bit longer than 20 seconds. So answers reduce the appearance of wrinkles. That's the first one. And the second most popular answer is lazy eye. Actually, all of the above. Migraine, you know, hyperhidrosis, which is um, over-sweating of the, of the sweat glands. So there's a takeaway from today. If you, there's so many uses for Botox, which you probably weren't aware of. Um, as I said, I'm responsible for the receivables for the Mayo region. I don't want to spend too long on this slide, but I want to give you guys an idea of, of what we're responsible for, the common collection challenges, and the challenges we face as a team. So unlike a lot of collection teams, I'm sure a lot of you are, you know, are familiar with this, um, we actually are responsible for capital allocation, credit control, and bad debt management. So we don't separate those functions into different teams. Okay? Some of the more common challenges, I'm sure you guys are experienced these or one or two of these in your own, in your own teams, uh, the sheer complexity of customers you deal with, you know, albeit from farmer distributors to doctors, or maybe in your own industries, it's, it's different. Um, languages, we have, I think we currently, we will deal in 11 different languages in the Mayo region. Payment cultures. Um, I know one of the challenges facing my team is, you know, the amount of different, not only payment types, but payment cultures. Like, in Italy, customers pay by direct debit reba. They actually have the opportunity to reject a direct debit. In France, there's still a huge reliance on check. In Turkey, they pay on average due date. Again, a lot of challenges which we have to deal with all the way over in the west of Ireland, okay? Team challenges, um, we're only getting busier. We're only getting busier, and the only way we're going to survive is becoming more efficient, okay? Um, the headcount over the last 10 years hasn't increased all that much for my team, and I'll go through that with you towards uh, the end of the presentation. Commercial alignment. Any collections team, um, I was given a very good piece of advice once, and that is, if you're best friends with the sales director, the sales rep, as a collector, you're not doing your job correctly. However, you still need to maintain a very constructive working relationship with them. So I'm going to show you a few things through our, cr our credit collection software, uh, wh how we maintain that relationship. And as well as the, the last big team challenge my company's faced is acquisitions. Um, we ourselves have been acquired um, about three years ago. And since then, we've made two multi-billion dollar acquisitions. And again, that's just putting additional pressure on collections. Okay? So this, I think, will be the most important slide for, for most of you guys here. Um, I hope you can relate to some of the issues I'm bringing up. Um, maybe it'll give you guys some ideas and a thought process of potentially where you want to take your teams. Back in 2007, we worked off SAP. We had no dedicated collection software, okay? Um, SAP is a great tool, you know, um, but it's not a dedicated collection software. There was one big change in that year, and that was we made an acquisition of a medical devices company called Inamed. The impact on us was the sheer volume of customers we inherited. Not only that, was we, her we inherited a ledger that we, we didn't even recognize document numbers. We, didn't, we couldn't differentiate between a credit note and an invoice. You know, we inherited a ledger where there was a significant amount of short payments, of overpayments, of customer queries. It, it was an absolute mess, okay? You can see there, and guys, at the back, if you can't see it, at the very bottom of my slide there, you'll see our net sales for 2007 was about $750 million. However, our current debt was only at 54%, low. We decided, um, we decided we needed to go with a credit collection software. That was our next requirement. And the first thing we needed to do is we needed to basically sort out the mess because we were not confident if we were to engage any direct communication through a chase process, a dunning process, by emails, we had to be confident the information we were sending over to our customers was correct. So through this uh, collection software, and um, we've been working with the same company, uh, Square Marble, over the last 10 years. Our collectors in the team over in Westport use this, collections, this collection diary to prioritize the debt, okay, to note down every interaction we had with the customer, okay, to get to a position that we were confident that we'd sorted out and cleaned up their accounts post-acquisition uh, of Inamed, that the information we were sending over was correct, okay? We face then a new issue before turning on the workflow, and that is the sheer complexity of customers we had. 
Before acquisition, we had approximately three different types of customer. Pharma wholesaler, distributor, and hospital. Now we are facing pharma wholesaler, distributor, private and public hospital, clinics, dental clinics, hospitals, one-time patients, and even, I'm not being smart here, even mothers buying products for their daughters and needed to build the mothers. That was the level of complexity we were dealing with. We needed a system that was flexible and, was a, and dealt that the chase process of our customers was dealt with in the appropriate way. Okay, you cannot deal with a doctor the same way you deal with a distributor. You just can't. Okay? So we got to the stage, uh, coming towards 2009, and we decided to turn on the workflow. Now, when I say workflow, I mean the entire chase process, from sending out Dunning letter 123, from the statement to the final action you will take, albeit send the debt to debt collection, or to make that one final call. Okay, so when you hear me refer to workflow, that's what I'm referring to. You can see there that our current debt increased slightly from 54 to 71%. Net sales is increasing every year. But in 2012, we had the workflow running for, for a couple of years. We made, you know, we made modest process of, of increasing the current debt from 71 to 76%. But we made a very conscious decision before turning on the workflow that we were only going to chase the largest debt. As collectors, let's be honest, the largest debt has the biggest impact on the bottom line. Okay, you could spend a couple of hours chasing 200 odd invoices for a couple of thousand euro will have no impact on your bottom line. You spend half an hour chasing an invoice worth a couple of million, yeah, you're going to make your boss happy. So we introduced this new dunning process and the two, the, t the challenges we faced at that moment in time was one, my team were lucky enough that we have very little turno turnover, but the challenge with that is inertia. It's the unwillingness to change, you know, a new technology. So one thing which is key in a credit console software, it has to be simple. It has to be simple to use that if you get someone and you recruit in within five, you know, five working days, they're up and running and able to, to chase debt. As well as that, and this is what I was, was referring to a couple of moments ago about chasing the smaller debt, which goes through the work process, which you've just ignored. Um, we decided at that moment in time, now is the time to go after that small debt, which is ca causing orders to go into to, to credit check which is causing our ledger to look messy. Um, and that was going to be difficult. So what we really needed there was a robust collection process. I mean, someone once told me collections has to be logical and methodical. So we were doing the logical part, but we weren't doing the methodical part. In 2014, through our, our, our workflow, we created status buckets for this small, inconsequential debt. What I mean by status buckets is, if you can measure how many of your customers are receiving the first Dunning letter, and then you see how many are receiving the second Dunning letter, you see the numbers decrease. How many receive the third, the third Dunning letter? Suddenly you're left with a very manageable group of customers to contact. Not only that is, we give our collectors two options. After they've received their third Dunning letter, final callback or straight to debt collection. That will clean up that small debt, which is a, you know, not going to make any bottom line difference to the current debt, but it's going to hold orders up in credit check. It's, it's time consuming. Okay? The second, I suppose, big change uh, we had in 2014 in regards to work process was within my company, um, there was already a commercial platform where customers could buy goods, buy our goods online. Now, part of this commercial platform was there was a payment portal. And for the very first time, we said, hey, it was, actually, it was actually the guys over uh, with, in, in Square Marble said, would you not think of connecting the two? You know, we're all talking about robotics, we're all talking about connectivity here. So we connected our internal commercial platform to our credit control solution, okay? Um, there was a few immediate quick gains with that, um, but I suppose the main learning curve was this, that we leverage Okay, we leverage off the experience of our credit control providers. We leverage off the experience of their customers and our own experiences. Okay, internally in my company, we haven't got someone whose job it is to constantly research the market. What, what is, where is collections going? You know, what are, the, what are companies doing now to improve collections? So, with, with our credit control, you know, provider every 18 months, two years, we're confident we'll get some sort of upgrade to the system, you know? And it's not just our ideas they're feeding off, it's a wealth of customers they're dealing with. 
but as well as that, and I mentioned this at the start of my presentation, the commercial team is key. You can't ignore them guys. They're customer facing. They're dealing with the customers. They're their best friends. Okay? They're the ones that are going to offer the world to, to your customer, and they don't really care that much about payment. You need to involve them in the process. You need to involve them in the process. And that was another work process. We were thinking, do you know what? Let's start involving the commercial team in our, in our credit control solution. Let's start sending them communications which they need, which are applicable to them, that they find useful. Okay? As 2014 carried on, um, the volume just grew exponentially in my company. We, we had two multi-billion dollar acquisitions, uh, companies called Zeltique and LifeCell. And suddenly, the idea of, of connectivity between systems, that was the priority. You know, our headcount, to give you an idea, in 2007 was about seven individuals. Um, at 2014, it was 11. You look at our net sales, you know, you've, got, you've almost doubled your net sales to, to 1.2 billion. Um, to give you an idea of how many customers we'd have at any one time in 2014, about 10,000 customers and about 60,000 line items. You know, no human input is going gonna, is gonna to do that work efficiently for you. You need connectivity. So, and this is the part I'm actually very excited about, is where we're working at the moment. And that is the latest upgrade um, of our credit control partners is a, s a solution called MIA. Okay? So as I said, we acquired these two, two companies, and we had a very challenging deadline to manage those debt ledgers before they came on ERP. With MIA, we're able to inherit data from multiple sources. We're able to manage those ledgers off SAP. Okay? Not only that, but we're integrating this credit control software with all our internal solutions. I want to know when a customer places a call to my guys, I want to have a timestamp in that customer account. When my collectors start calling the customer, I want to know a timestamp of when they call the customer. I want the system to connect with our Dun and Bradstreet, who we use for credit reports. I want, the cost I want our credit control software to speak to and connect to our query, res query management resolution tool. Okay, and that's what we're working on at the moment, connecting all those systems in internally. Um, as well as that, um, create a customer scorecard. Customer scorecard and customer onboarding, um, they're quite similar. You guys want as, to spend as least time as possible in taking in new customers. Okay, now in Allergan it's quite difficult because they need medical certificates, but you want to basically, if a customer applies to be a customer of yours, you want them to be set up as a customer as quickly as possible, but also in a responsible way where you set an appropriate credit limit. So with MIA, we're getting all systems to talk to each other. We're getting the input of the local FD. We're getting the input of our credit control software or our, our credit report software. We're getting input from sales. What's the forecasted sales for the next year? All these inputs are important. And through, through an, a, a mathematical algorithm, you will get a score. A score saying, yes, we can do business with this customer up to such and such amount. And the great thing is, it's not like a cricket score. You're not watching that. You're actually seeing a legitimate scorecard, which is easy to read. Um, tangible collector actions. A lot of collectors are reactive to change. Okay? The customer's payment habits change for the negatively, and we're basically trying to catch up on that. So proactively, we need our competitors, if they're getting a prompt to call a customer, or to contact a customer, that needs to be in relation to you know, a change in payment habits. If the customer's payment habits is changing for the negative, you want the customer's workflow or your collector's workflow to change, okay? As well as a chase sequence. If a customer is paying later and later and later and later, why are you sending your documents, your dunning letters at the same time every month? That time period needs to shorten, okay? Um, a, few more, a few more things we're working on, I'm conscious of time here, is bespoke communications. Yes, we can divide the communications based on what type of customer we have, but there's always that one customer, as I'm sure you're all aware, there's one customer that wants to receive communications in a particular format. Okay? You're, you're, you're managing the customer's expectations by creating these bespoke communications. Um, workflow and state change. I've spoken to you already about the importance of in including the commercial team in your collection activities. I would imagine, all right, if you have a key account and there's multiple queries on that account, who wants to know? The collector's team? Not really. 
the commercial director, the sales director, absolutely. The compliance director, the quality, the quality team. So state change is involving not just the collections team, but all the teams that are involved in the collection process. Okay, all the teams that are involved in the collection process. Um, lastly, to make my life easier, you know, we, we, we can get people, new sales staff across Europe who are new to the company. Again, we want them to interact with this credit control software. They mightn't have English, you know, they mightn't have English. So we want that portal to be changed in their local language. And we want them to be able to make those changes themselves, have a portal which, um, which is applicable to them and is understanding to them. So I have one more slide. Um, this will only take about, about a minute. Is My team has been recognized nat nationally in Ireland from a few awards. Now, these awards are important, not so much in terms of motivation. Yes, they are, of course. Everyone likes you know, your team to be doing well. But how I see these awards as important is, especially in Dublin, where you've got the likes of Google, or, or HQ, have HQs there, Instagram, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, it's, it's the back office capital of the world, a lot of accountancy firms. You're able to benchmark where your performance is against the best in, in the country or, or, or the market you're in. And it gives you great confidence when you can go back to your, to your manager saying, hey, okay, my, my current debt has improved from 54 to 89% over 10 years, but hey, this is what other companies are doing, and this is what we're doing, and we're getting we're actually getting recognized for that. And I would encourage, if, this, if there's a similar uh, you know, awards ceremony within your markets, I would encourage you guys to go for those awards. Um, okay, you mightn't win, I'd hope you do, but if, if you don't win, there's so many learnings to get from those, from those awards. And as well as that, you get to meet teams. You get to meet teams, you get to, to share ideas, bounce ideas. And we certainly got a lot of ideas from, from going out and participating in these awards. So very last question and then I'll be finished, is what weight do you think Allergan's largest breast implant is in grams? All right, have a think. This is not on the app, okay? 800 grams. So you go and order an 800 gram steak, now you see it's, it's, it's heavy, it's heavy. But guys, I'll take, <laughs> I'll take any questions after the next presentation, but uh, thanks for listening. So, good afternoon, thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Mark, thank you, uh, Anthony. Um, we heard a lot of things, thanks to James, about neighbors, about behaviors, and uh, I would like to take you through a small journey on, uh, on FinTech, because I'm Gert-Jan Brillenberg, I work for uh, Hansa Orga, which is a company that provides add-ons to ERP, and we focus mainly on SAP. So, having said this, let me see if this works. Yeah, so who are we? Um, hopefully after this session, you, have, uh, you feel what you have been missing, as James said this morning. So we have been uh, in, your, in, in the, let's say in Germany since mid 80s, and today we have a global presence, and more than 2,000 clients, and 16 offices worldwide. And we try to bring world-class finance value in SAP systems. So. I will not discuss the collection parts and other things of credit because it has been highlighted over the last, let's say, presentations a lot. I would like to focus on what we call cash application. So the first step before you pick up the phone, that you're sure that all the money that hopefully came into your bank accounts has been reconciled perfectly. And the, let's say, additional information you can receive via various channels, and I'll get back to that later. So. The challenges, yeah, I can, I can read them all for you, but hopefully you recognize a lot of them. Um, there is still a lot of manual effort. So if you set up a, a new system, uh, an SAP system example, the latest release, it is all about all kinds of processes, but when it comes to finance processes, there, ca there can be, let's say, distinguish uh, more than one gap, especially in the area of cash application. So in this case, you receive your bank statements via various banks, via various formats. And of course, there are standards, but everywhere, just name South Africa, or whatever, or Portugal, they have a different format. So how you get into the system, that's one challenge, but then you have to reconcile the information, which is uh, yeah, quite a job, if it can be done. Finally, and Anthony mentioned something also in their business, 
you receive remittance advice. So the customer sends you a, a gross payment in your bank, but what did he pay? So you can book it on the account, so the credit line is healthy, but what is the outstanding am amounts, which invoices should be reconciled? Then they can send you remittance advices. That's another challenge. What format do you send to you? And how can you process it? I can tell you standard SAP can only process the standard EDI, which is old school, standard, but other formats like PDFs that everybody uses today or are produced by your vendor systems cannot be processed automatically. So, okay. Then if you receive information in your bank, I think you can recognize it if you're familiar with your, your bank statements, they send multiple invoices. What does it mean? There's a range, invoice 1 to 3, dash 5, 7. Now, a standard tool will never be able to reconcile it. So there comes the other buzzword of the bots, the robotics. We are actually since the last 20 years implementing uh, RPA solutions. So machine learning, artificial intelligence, algorithms. So that's what we do to be able to get the information in a central system and then be able to match it logically and be sure that you have reconciled your bank statement and remittances early in the morning before you start your dunning or your collection processes. What is there more? Okay, there's also something about the US. We are focusing here on the Central and Eastern Europe, but especially for you, <laughs> Patrick, the, uh, the US lockboxes, also challenging information from checks. This is not really a standard. There is a standard, but banks are creative and can send you just a, another taste of a format, and exactly that's, that should be solved in an ERP system. Okay, if you do standard SAP, I have some slides on that, it is not easy to set it up, and if you set up one company code, you have to do the other one again. And if you want to add a bank, etc., etc. So it's really very time consuming to set it up. And another thing you mentioned, Anthony, user friendliness. So feel what you've been missing. That's very important. SAP comes with S4 HANA, maybe you've seen it. It looks really fancy. Very nice BI reporting, really nice Fiori apps like on your, your, your tablets. But guess what? Not all companies have upgraded to S4 HANA yet. So somewhere there it is, but today you're working with an old look and feel of the system. Yeah. What we try to do is that the end users are the owner, and you define who is an end user or a key user, is allowed to do the settings in your system environment, and everything, of course, it's in SAP, auditable, etc. World class, thanks to Hackett. We have one or two slides from Hackett. To give you an idea where we are, so here you see the different processes. Um, first line is the cash application. So that companies, only 14% have, have reached a fully automated process. But what is done the effort automation? It's only 36%. So that's really quite low. And I will try to show you how that can be enhanced. There's one question indirectly on this one. So if you could please answer the question, what? To what extent is the automation in your today's cash application process? Less than 20%, 20 to 50, or over 50%? <coughs> and what we mean with automation is absolutely no manual intervention. So it's really based on the algorithms that are in your system, the, in, the, the bank state line item can be processed directly in the accounting area of SAP, being on your GL, AP, or AR area. So that's really 100% without manual intervention. Do we get the answers now, Mark? Ah, there we are. Okay. Interesting. And, but not a surprise, because it's actually, it matches with the previous slide of 36%. So um, come and get a chocolate. Um, <laughs> then, of those 36, um, percent of automation that, that gives a thought. So what we have seen, and actually what have Haggard researched for us, is that 57% of the um, ERP solutions are looking for a best breed solution, an enhancement in their ERP. So we're still in a good way. How can you do, just to give you an example, because everybody will start in the standard ERP environment to try and fix the problem or try to optimize it. That's the first step. So, what, what does it bring? And that's the picture here. Um, the current situation, if you do the, let's say, 
implementation standard and you don't touch it, you only import your bank statements and then you have set up one or two rules, it's approximately 20% automation. That means it leaves you 80% of the line items. If you then look in SAP and you ask some people of your IT department to help them to get, let's say, some additional, additional algorithms to be set up, mind you, IT department, so not the end users, but really IT has to be involved, you can reach up to 40, depending on countries, I think Anthony said it. In some countries you get very rich and good information, in other countries you get a very minimum information or you get only remittance advices, etc. But this is an average, it's 40%. And if you talk about an add-on, like our Autobank solution, then you can reach out to 80% and even higher, but it's an average. And it includes the automation of remittance advices, which is also very important and becomes more and more important. Another thing that we also have implemented now is an example payment, payments from PayPal and the new technologies. Okay, just a slide on how you can set it up in standard SAP, what is needed, of course, SAP has functions, so you can set up the standard rules, but it's about an invoice and a customer number at the top of my head. And then you have to do it company by company, and it's always driven by IT people. Um, finally, you reach out with a 25 to 40 percent, let's say 40, I just mentioned it, and it takes you about 20 days to do that. And if you want to change it, you have to go back to IT again. Yeah? Um, of course, I just mentioned it, I'm not here to, let's say, attack SAP, we're a partner. If you run the latest SAP version, with the Fiori and the S4 HANA, and Enhanced Pack 8 is called, then you have very nice features, but still the engine in it is not there. So there's not the algorithms, but there is the look and feel, so that's one thing. If you now look at our, our add-on, or an add-on that we provide in Autobank, you can start configuring with the key users, so the business people, they know the business, one company and one bank, as an example. And you can reuse those rules for all the other companies you're adding. So that means it's very user-friendly, but it's also easy to monitor and to, to really stay on the performance. You don't have to go back to your IT and ask, hey, I've been thinking about another algorithm. No, you can do it yourself. And it's unlimited. So that means that finally you have a hit rate that's already high when you start a project. Yeah? What does it mean? That you have a solid tool that is owned by the people and they have a good feeling. And there are some customers here as well, so, but they know exactly that they can control the process in a lot of detail in an SAP system, which is very unique. Finally, uh, I think it's important and mentioned that the effort to do this is because we can do the trainer trainer, that's how we call it, the trainer trainer methodology. It's only 25 to 30 days. And of course, you can extend it, it depends on the scope. But to give the example similar to the previous one, this is how it can be done. Some neighbors, so I promise to show you some neighbors because then you believe what I tell you. Um, these are names that are running the tool, and just some, bull, uh, some ballparks here. Um, the implementation example of Electrolux, I think <laughs> I met some of you, uh, was, was done seven years ago and recently, actually people who were last year know that the story was told by amongst Monica, uh, Monica and a colleague, um, they added the remittance advice solution and today they increased their automation rate approximately 40% on top of the standard in SAP. Another one, which is really one of our uh, favorite clients because they were making a joke when we were at, a, at an event of, I think it was also Hackett, that was told that, let's say, best in class was 60%, and they said, okay, we do 90, 93%, what are we then? But yeah, everybody knows booking, it's quite a straight through process, but nevertheless, they have to process a huge number of remittance advices, because all those big hotel chains, like Hilton and uh, the Cubis Hotel, whatever, they, they send huge remittances every month, and it's all automated to a very high percentage. Metronic, and also other people are here from Metronic, they actually started when they were in a nice country in the Netherlands, where I'm from, and they moved over to Prague, the whole process, and also they have achieved a real automation um, over the years, and of course things have changed. So if you use the software for seven years, it should still be applicable to the circumstances and not the circumstances of ten years ago. So this is one of the things where we, I think, really 
did, did a good job, but not only we, especially the customers, because it's all, it's, A, it's about data, getting the data, so bank data, remittance data, that's one. But finally, if people do not adopt the solution, you have a huge problem. And what we see, and we have critical people when we start discussing it, but as soon as they see the tool and they see how user-friendly it is, but more important, what the results are, let's say, after implementation, and they all have their, I can say the word, the frustration about an ERP implementation, Oracle, SAP, it's a nightmare. We promised to do it in three years. And then, I'm, I'm, I'm not in the manufacturing, I'm in finance, I'm in accounting. So my thing, my priority, is at the end of the line, and with, let's say, an add-on, you can really boost the performance, and you can get the right KPIs, and today, with the modern look and feel of BI reports, it's, it's really a helpful tool. And finally, the people, they can do the core business using the right tool. They can really look at the dunning and the, their collections and don't spend too much time on this process that uh, could be automated and today with RPA. Okay. Another question, um, which is applicable to the process. How much time do you daily spend on your cash application process? So the process is getting your bank information into your system environment, importing it in your, in your ERP system, and reconcile the line items to your real target account, so to the AR, AP, and GL ledger. Is it one to five hours? Is it six to 15? Or is it more than 16 hours? One FTE is eight hours, okay? <laughs> Is there a drum? Or <laughs> okay. Ui, that's very positive. There's lots of people using Autobank, I guess, because this is a good number. <laughs> um, but finally, there's still lots of, yeah, 50% that are over the uh, six hours spent. So, um, as said, well done. Uh, but there's still some room for improvement. And um, if there are any questions, we can take them at the end of the session. There we are. <laughs>